Okay, full disclosure, when Kevin from Keffa Studios, the creator of Banners of Honor, which I'm still planning on fully reviewing on my channel, contacted me saying that he was creating an entire book for jousting rules for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, I was a little bit skeptical because how on earth were you going to take a rule about something that is not like the biggest part of your campaign or maybe like a part of the session or something like that and how are you going to create an interesting full depth book about that. But then I started reading into the project more and I'm getting pretty Damn excited. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, my name is Mr. Trosk and this is the complete guide to jousting 5th edition. Everything you need to bring the exciting sport of jousting to a 5th edition game near you. And that summarizes it and I'm going to tell you why I am excited for this. Um, if you uh, remember, maybe a long time ago I did a video for Keffa Studios, uh, the creators of Banners of Honor. Kevin from Keffa uh, Stu Studios has uh, created Banners of Honor, which is a campaign uh, setting book that has uh, a bunch of jousting rules in it. Really cool, really good in-depth jousting rules. I love those rules, but this video you're watching right now is not uh, zooming in on those rules or anything because I want to do that in my Banners of Honor review that I'm hopefully also doing within the boundaries of this Kickstarter campaign. When you're watching this video, this Kickstarter campaign is probably going to be live and it's going to be uh, more than zero euros out of the 9,394 euros. So that's 10k US dollars for me. It just converts that um, because I'm in Europe, right? So, um, yeah, I have a preview page because uh, Kefa, Kevin, uh, again, sent this preview page to me uh, and I really want to show this to you because Banners of Honor is such a high-quality book and uh, Kevin just makes really high-quality uh, stuff. Uh, the writing, the art, the, um, how everything is interconnected with each other. That is where he's really, really, really good at and the complete guide to jousting promises to be something like that in that sense. Uh, so they're taking the jousting rules that were originally in Banners of Honor and they're going to make their own separate book out of that, which is really, really a really cool idea. I haven't seen anything like this, especially with this type of, um, this like this funny artwork with like, it reminds me a little bit of, and that's often with Kefa Studios, the artwork that he uses or they use, um, it often reminds me of like these cardboard games like I don't know a Machiavelli and that those kinds of games uh, that's where the artwork always reminds me of that kind of stuff right um, which I think is really cool a really cool uh, feeling that you give to it because after all Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition whatever our RPGs they're they're games they don't they're not to be taken too seriously at least to my opinion and that's why I absolutely love this so I was wondering I told him like you know what I'm a bit skeptical about this because how in the hell are you going to create an interesting book out of something that's jousting, right? Um, yeah, I, 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 then I started talking to him back and forth, and uh, and then after a while he showed me this, and now I'm really I'm really sold on it. I really want to get this in my hands, and I really want to add a complete jousting tournament to my game. Uh, let's just talk about it. Welcome to the complete guide to jousting for fifth edition. This book includes everything you need to bring the exciting sport of jousting to your tabletop including jousting mechanics featuring our original rules such as, optional rules such as flying spell casting and magic items and about the spell casting thing I want to talk about that in a bit and fully customizable equipment system new character background including squire knight errant and retired knight which is really cool uh, especially the squire could like work really well to my opinion um, in a party with a retired knight because you could like roleplay a squire that looks up to this retired knight and this retired knight might be like so retired that he isn't really good at anything anymore but he has like these tales and the squire is always like listening to these tales it's like a lot of role playing potential right there i would love to play the squire and be like oh my knight please teach me uh over 40 new creatures to ride uh like dire wolves giant boars eggs beaks and more new magic items role playing guides for bonding with your mount Really interesting. As well as pers uh, personality tables for each creature to ensure, ensure that every mount feels truly unique. So you have personality tables for your mounts. And that's really cool. I haven't seen that. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that. Maybe I've seen it, but I don't think so. Like, normally if I give my players um, a horse, 
it's a horse. They give it a name and I might give it like a quirk or whatever, right? And um, uh, most of the time when they get two horses in front of a cart, um, um, they're also they're always named Fleetwood and Mac for some reason. I don't know. I just came up with that once and I think it's really funny. Uh, but like having like really like a personality per mount is really cool, especially for like fantasy creatures like griffins and that kind of stuff. Like they could have like a personality. Some might be more aggressive. Some might be more uh, laid back or defensive or whatever. I think that is a really cool, interesting thing. Uh, optional feats for all characters that all relate to knights, jousting, or the villains uh, of the realm. Tournament events. These encounters will keep the players on their toes even if they are not practicing in the event. And that is really important because that is where I was on... Look at this. Just look at this. This looks so freaking cool. That is where I was um, a little bit skeptic because... The thing is, I have done jousting in my game in a Cobalt Press adventure. Um, the, 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 about there is this tower, and they need to go in. There is this jousting thing in order to progress the adventure. And like one of my players, one of the player characters of my party, did the jousting thing, and all the others were just like kind of watching. And it were maybe like like one dude was like, "I scream this," and then I was yeah, okay. You get a plus one on your jousting check or on your riding check or whatever because you're ally. But more than that. There wasn't more than that, right? So, so it, there's always like this. As a game master, you always need to try to keep it interesting for the rest of the party. Um, that's why I, I often shy away from jousting tournaments or like one player needing to play a game of chess against like a villain or whatever that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not really good at implementing that in my games, and um, I think having that kind of stuff, uh, these encounters will keep the players on their toes even if they are not uh, participating. An event that is really really important that is really 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 cool um yeah look at this look how just everything um i want to talk about the spell casting in a bit uh so there is a ten thousand gold piece prize for the champion of the joust each lord of carol may send a single champion to complete in the joust former champions and other exceptional warriors are welcome uh there's also uh, uh that is this is also really cool because there's this jousting tournament right but there's also archery and melee events that are open to all so it becomes like this festival thing more right there's this jousting and these rounds are going and every now and then you're like you know what i'm gonna go to the archery thing which makes it again interesting because there might be like one knight character in the party trying to gain the favor of i don't know of a king or whatever by uh, being their champion. They're like, let me be your champion and then you can do this for me if I win the Jousting tournament. But at that same time, somebody, the other person in the party might join the archery or the melee events just to, for the heck of it, you know? Um, which makes it more interesting, more stuff to do. Um, and then I want to talk about, I want to talk about the pledge levels in a bit. I don't often go too deep into that. Uh, so 40 creatures, mounts to train and bond as you aspire. There's something about this that I find really interesting about about the uh, spell casting. I know it was in here somewhere. Feats, equipment, magic items. I don't know where I read it, but they are, there is tournament setups, different tournament setups that you can use for your, um, for your game. Like there might be a bracket style or a sudden death style or whatever tournament setup you want to have, right? But um, there's also optional rules for spell casting. And something that I find really interesting is um, the jousters might be able to cast spells. But you also could have that there might be like a row of VIPs. Like who paid like 100 gold pieces just to sit on that row. Five people and they are allowed to cast spells during the event. That would be, and that's something I read somewhere on this page, and I find that so freaking cool. It reminds me of like that Harry Potter and Harry Potter that scene where where uh, is it Dumbledore who just stands up and casts a spell to protect Harry Potter from falling. That is, um, yeah, I like that kind of stuff. I like that kind of stuff. I don't know what they're doing here. They're they're having their horse read a spell or something to to make it stronger or something like that. Uh, build an endless variety of tournaments using the structure provided in this book. So yeah, mounts over forty mounts uh, from challenge rating one to three. Create powerful allies for heroes and villains alike. Um, 
Price guide is in there. So yeah, they're going really deep into like the idea of jousting and everything that is around it. Also like the festivities that come and like the polit political intrigue that comes with that, right? Because kings sent their knights, um, their champions from different kingdoms or different parts of the kingdom uh, to that one thing to gain like, I don't know, they might send a, they might send a knight but they also might send a squire who in secret isn't really a squire. They might be like some kind of like rogue or whatever. And they need to try to find out certain stuff about certain people. And you get like this political intrigue within the festival. I absolutely love the idea of it. Um, yeah, I'm completely, totally in. And uh, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot wait to get this in my hands. So yeah, pledge levels. Uh, let me see. Wait, there is pledge levels here. So the complete guide to jousting will set you back PDF 20 bucks. Uh, complete guide to jousting 5e hardcover plus PDF 40 bucks. But there's also the early bird 40 bucks. And I like this. Uh, early bird, it doesn't say how long, but it's probably for 24 or 48 hours. Um, so you get the hardcover, you get the PDF, but you also get the PDF of banner. Uh, Banners of Honor, which is a really, really, really cool campaign setting uh, that I'm still um, reading into. And I want to review on my channel channel later. And it is what spawned the idea of having an entire book about jousting. Uh, which is a really cool early bird thingy. You also can get uh, uh, back for 100 US dollars. Which is the early bird Kaffa Studios super supporter. Uh, which gets you everything. Uh, it's a game master screen. It is a hardcover PDF, hardcover PDF, and a bunch of, S I think it's FD SDL files that you get with that. Uh, so that's pretty damn cool. Um, there's of course a retail thing. And I love, I love, I love the idea of this. I was super skeptical about this. And <laughs> I, I don't know why. In the beginning I was like, yeah, a complete guide to jousting. That's like four pages. That's it. But the way Kava Studios uh, is doing it. So Kevin, from me to you, I'm really excited about this project. I hope it funds in like one minute and then over funds with like a gazillion. Uh, and to the people watching, if you find this interesting, click the link in the description below and uh, see if it's for you. If it's for you, back it. If it's not for you, uh, I don't know, skip it. And until next video, bye-bye.